Great place to visit, but in the context of football, the Red Blacks are trying to change that. Last time they were here, they won at home for the first time in nearly two years, but this is a pretty tough out against the 4-1 Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Dwayne, and it's been a rough week for uh, Ottawa last week losing in Hamilton, but more importantly losing Jeremiah Masoli in his first game back in a year. So on comes Dustin Crum, the rookie, to make his first CFL start. Yeah, a scene that's become all too common, I guess, here in Ottawa is having to break in a new starting quarterback. Dustin Crum did a pretty good job, I thought, coming off the bench last week against Hamilton, acquitted himself well. But this week he's got to face Willie Jefferson, an absolute monster on that Winnipeg defensive line. Mike O'Shea, 86 wins as a head coach with Winnipeg tied with Cal Murphy for second all time behind Bud Grant could pass him today and Bob Dice Winnipeg native got his start in the CFL 20 years ago with the Bombers but this is first year as a full time head coach and it has had its challenges especially as quarterback as Dwayne had talked about the Red Blacks won the toss they've deferred and so Winnipeg will take the ball from the east end and it's Greg McRae who uh, is one of the returners, Johnny Augustine, there he is, the other. McRae had a big day as a receiver, had a touchdown last week against Calgary, and he also nearly returned a missed field goal for a touchdown, standing in for the injured Janarian Brent. Richie Leone to get things kicked off for the Ottawa Red Blocks. Week six continues here on the CFL on TSN doubleheader day into the hands of McRae across the 30. As McRae gets it out to about the 39, for Zach Kolaris, the two-time reigning MOP, who uh, comes in 4-1, and 31-5 in the regular season since joining the Blue Bombers. Yeah, and he's provided so much consistency at the position and really helped a team that was on its way to becoming Grey Cup champions. Obviously, they completed that run in 2019, repeated in 21. Such a fixture, such a huge part of the success in Winnipeg in recent years. And tied with Vernon Adams for touchdown passes this season with nine. Top rated quarterback so far in this young season on the first down, Winnipeg. Brady Oliveira in the backfield, the leading rusher, the fake to him. Kolaris gets it away to his right, and that one is high. It was intended for Rashid Bailey uh, with the coverage from Brandon Dandridge on the field side corner. Yeah, as, as we take a look at this, the starting lineups will set up a great matchup here today. The league's reigning most outstanding offensive lineman, Stanley Bryant, at left tackle today. And we'll get to that matchup as we go. Greg McRae coming off a terrific game, both on offense and special teams for Winnipeg, piling up the yardage as he plays in the slot. Three receivers out to the wide side. Oliveira in the backfield. Out of shotgun, Polaris over the middle, and no. A two and out, that's intended for Nick, Nick Dembski, and starting at safety on this day is Alonzo Adai with the injury to Justin Howell and helping break that up to force the Bombers to punt. Yeah, and you see Adai playing down low, right off the top, hovering over the middle, quickly making a break on that ball to take it away from Dembski. And so Australian Jamison Sheehan in his first year in the CFL, back to punt and we saw Dandridge a moment ago on defense and back doing the returning now for the Red Blacks. He has one punt return for a touchdown in this season. Sheehan, a classic end over end style and gets a beautiful roll inside the 10. And it does roll into the end zone. Dandridge lets it do that to give up the single and get some better field position as well. But a nice punt by Sheehan who was hoping to hem them in deeper. So Dustin Crum. A star at Kent State and he came up to the Red Blacks last September on the practice roster. He went in last week after the injury to Masoli and he did make quite an impression Dwayne with his ability to run the football. Yeah he really did and we didn't see him try to push the ball deep in that football game but I thought for the most part in terms of managing the passing game and obviously what he did with his legs that included him running for a touchdown. Uh, a, a guy who definitely pops on the radar as an intriguing quarterback prospect but Tough matchup for him here today. Here we go, his first start, and he's throwing off to the left, and that one too far for Justin Hardy. It heads out of bounds. It is second and ten. Taking a look at this starting lineup, an O-line for Ottawa that includes the former Bomber first-round pick, Drew Desjardins, big off-season signing for the Red Blacks. 
than in that receiving core with the young guy playing quarterback. We'll keep an eye on Nate Bahar today. He's a guy I suspect could be a little bit of a safety blanket for Dustin Crump. Bahar, the veteran out of Carlton University nearby. Second and ten. Off to the left, it's complete, but not for much. Just across the 40 is Hardy with Adam Big Hill, uh, the leading tackler, moving in on him. And so a quick two and out for the Red Blacks. And Ottawa not taking any big chances, obviously, in their first series with Crum at the helm. Leone standing back at just outside the Ottawa 25. Lone returner back is McCray. Down inside the 20, bobbles it, but does hang on and gets it up across the 25. Adam McClare among those down in special teams coverage. Zach Kalaros. Coming back on for the Winnipeg Blue Bomb. Start for that Winnipeg offense. Stamps had the lead, tied at the half, but progressively, Calaros went to work, ended up 20 for 28 and a couple of touchdown passes, including that one to Greg McRae. Yeah, McRae, who's an interesting Swiss Army knife type of weapon. Making his way into that Winnipeg starting lineup. Just adds that dimension of speed, elusiveness, and versatility. Ball is handed off to the CFL's leading rusher, Brady Oliveira. Also the leader in yards from scrimmage in the CFL. Short carry there. He is 400 in five games coming in. Well, Brady Oliveira has provided that seamless transition in the Winnipeg backfield from the, the legendary Andrew Harris, of course now a Toronto Argonaut. Fittingly, both guys coming from the same Oak Park High School program. He does pick up three, a second and seven at the Winnipeg 30, Kolaris. Steps up, facing the heat, and completes it to Drew Wolitarski. Enough for a first down and up across the 40 for Winnipeg. And Kolaris stood in until the final moment before getting rid of that ball. Well, yeah, I mean, this is just demonstrating the veteran presence of Zach Kolaris. You see Mike Wakefield's going to provide some pressure pocket closing in. But Zach just stands in there, bodies all around him. You can see it's like throwing out of a phone booth for the Bomber quarterback, but he knows that route's going to come open. He just has that faith to stay put. And Wolitarski, too. Three touchdowns on the season, receiving over 200 yards on pace for his best season in his CFL career. Back to the ground and tough against that Ottawa defensive front. Have a look at them. Yeah, we talked about the matchup for Stanley Bryant today, his most outstanding lineman. Well, he's going to see a lot of the league's reigning most outstanding defensive player, Lorenzo Malden, who led in sacks last year. Now, in the linebacking core and in the secondary, I want to talk about a couple great recent draft picks, guys I really like for Ottawa. You have Adam O'Claire starting at middle linebacker, number six overall in 2020. Alonzo Adai in today at free safety for Justin Howell, number 13 overall back in 21. Second and long again. Nine to go from the Winnipeg 42 Polaris. Deeper ball. Open receiver two. Nick Dembski has it inside the Ottawa 35. And a big first down for that bomber offense on the move. Well, once again, we've got pressure coming in. Defensive line. The offensive line has to hold up here in order to be able to complete the long pass. Watch Bryce Carter trying to get there. Ah. Ball comes loose, quickly working again, and Kolaris does fall on it for a loss. So near disaster after a big play, a 35-yard gain to Nick Dembski, but that one pushes them back outside the Ottawa 40. Yeah, just a little bit of trouble with the exchange, obviously. Shake that one off, but a tough second and long situation here. And a loss of nine for Michael Shea Farmers. As the crowd, much beleaguered as it's been in 2023, does pick up the energy now in second and 19 as Claros is forced to step up and he is taken down. 
It's Blessman Ta'ala in his first year with the Red Blacks, product of University of Hawaii, and he gets the sack. And that is his first sack of the season. And Ta'ala's been a nice pickup for Ottawa this season. First overall pick in the global draft. It's been a starter from day one here for the Red Blacks on their defensive line. One of the rare global players that has come in and had that kind of impact, making his way into the starting lineup. And so, Sergio Castillo, whose longest field goal this season is 50 yards, and he is 11 for 11 coming in, and this one from 52. To Sheehan putting it down. Straight as an arrow. Splits the uprights. Beautifully done as Castillo remains perfect. 12 for 12 on the season. And three more points on the board to go along with the Rouge. And a 4 nothing Winnipeg lead. Justin Hardy and the Red Blacks. I want to take a look back. This is the difference between holding them to a field goal and giving up a touchdown. So you're going to see Coleman having words here with Nick Dembski as they make their way towards the line of scrimmage. And they came together and bumped there. That gives Winnipeg second life on the drive. And they turn it into a touchdown. And so much after the play, the field goal unit was coming on. Castillo was already on the field when Coleman uh, committed that foul. And yeah, that's a four point difference right now. You would have to assume with a short field goal try they were going to be faced with for Winnipeg. Instead, they put seven more on the board. It's an 11 nothing Blue Bomber lead over the Ottawa Red Blacks. Late in the first quarter, under two minutes to go until quarter time, Brandon Dandridge back to this kickoff. One of the two returners back to get it. It's Jackson Bennett at the 15. And he gets across the 30, lost the ball momentarily. It looked like he was able to scoop it back in. Bomb, yes, he did. So it will be red black football. They don't need that the way it's going. Willie Jefferson, part of the damage so far in this game for Winnipeg, picking up his seventh sack of the season. Looking to go to work again on the Red Blacks and quarterback Dustin Crum when we come back. Drive by the Bombers, as we talked about, aided big time by a penalty, Dwayne. Yeah, and a couple of big plays along the way. Quick slant. Shoshone got it started. Nick Dembski off play action. Pushing it down the field. The deep one to Wallatarski. They had Rashid Bailey setting them up in close. We talked about the penalty earlier. It's a movement along the line on first down. And that one incomplete intended for Nate Mahar by Dustin Crump. Yeah, you mentioned that movement. It looked to me like Willie Jefferson was a little early on the play, but uncalled. You see Dustin Crumb getting on the move a little bit. Trying to find Nate Bahar Abu Durami Soiree. Nice new addition to that Blue Bomber secondary. So a tough start for Dustin Crumb is one for three for zero yards, and it's a second and ten at the Ottawa 34. Empty backfield. Oh, he's taken down. It's Adam Big Hill, the blitzing middle linebacker, coming in and sacking Dustin Crum. First sack of the season for Big Hill, and it'll force the Red Blacks in a two and out just to kick it away again. And you see Adam Big Hill lined up left side of your screen, right up on the line of scrimmage on this one. Quick loop all the way around. Had the interior offensive lineman occupied by D lineman. He looks like he's going to rush on the tackle, but then loops it in. No way the tackle could track him in there the way they set up that stunt. So nothing going right at all for the Red Blacks offense so far in this one. Half a minute until quarter time now. Winnipeg with an 11 point lead about to get the ball back and should get it in decent field position as well with Greg McRae and flags coming out beforehand. Time count violation, Ottawa number 13. Five yard penalty remains third down. 
You can sense the unrest understandably here at TD Place. The way this game has started for Bob Dice and the Red Blacks. Pushing them further back and now McCray standing up at the Winnipeg 40 to receive this Richie Leone punt. Just inside the 40. And he gets away for a moment and then down on a knee. Lonzo Atai had been charging in. Well, how's this for a way to start things off tomorrow? Novak Djokovic chasing his record 24th Grand Slam title. And in his way, young phenom, Dwayne Ford's favorite player, the young Spaniard, Carlos Alcaraz. Love that guy. Men's final from the All England Club. And it begins at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific, only on TSN. I'm a big fan as well. I mean, this, this kid, I think even Djokovic would admit, he is the future. He's going to win a pile of Grand Slam events. Already has. AJ Leopo, love you. Just another day at the office. <laughs> another day for that man, Adam Big Hills, climbing the charts all time and tackles too. Had the sack of Dustin Crum earlier. Winnipeg with the ball again, 11 point lead. Swinging it out, it's low, but it is picked up by McRae. Yeah, nice job scooping that one off the shoestrings by Greg McRae and doing it in stride as well. was the last play of the first quarter. The Bombers came in as a heavily favored team, and you got a good indication in the first 15 why. Field goal, touchdown, 11-point lead through one. 11 nothing, and yes, Dwayne Ford, the numbers do tell the story, don't they? Well, yeah, I mean, Winnipeg has, has carried the play so far. It, it shows the difference in experience between these two teams. Well, here's a guy who, you know, from the studio most recently, and. Now he's with us in the booth for a little while, and he's going to be doing more for us in the booth. And also happened to be head coach of the Ottawa Red Blacks and back in the day head coach in Winnipeg and an offensive coordinator winning a great cup with the Bombers as well, Paul Lapolis. Um, welcome. First of all, you know, you're getting a little taste of what Dwayne Ford's doing. Uh, observation so far from this point? Yeah, I wasn't on the panel, so I, you know, Dwayne was great to invite me in because I got a color gig coming yeah. up in a couple of weeks. You're going to so be just, uh, doing a few games, three yeah, games this season? Three games this season, so excited to be with you guys and, and learn from you and, and work. Yeah, hey, when you when you see Bob Dice and going through four quarterbacks and five starts, you must feel some of his pain given what you had to go through last year. Yeah, you know, you know, no, what a great leader, and, and you know, Bob will get him get him sorted out. Ottawa challenged the previous play of a completed pass. After review by command center, the challenge is successful, and the play was overruled to be an incomplete pass. It will be second down, Winnipeg. So that was the one Greg McRae when it looked like he was able to scoop yeah. it off the turf. Yeah, apparently he didn't quite get it before it hopped here. Despite oh. the nice effort, you can see very clearly. Great job from our truck with the replay. And a good challenge for Bob Dice. He's mentioning Lapo and the challenges that he has faced so far this season. So second and ten of the Winnipeg 33 flag is out ball is away it falls incomplete and Galera's had to get rid of that one quickly yeah they had Lorenzo Malden that time on a twist working all the way to the middle he was the guy in Kolaris's face I think that was as much of a throwaway as anything for Zach yeah you, you know you will see if if that was the the penalty came from the Ottawa guys I'm not sure we'll we'll see as they go. But do finish your thought. Though. Offside, Ottawa number 37. Five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. So that's that's Dandridge. But, I mean, a lot of challenges for Bob, and you, you know this market well, um, just when you don't have the stability of quarterback. Yeah, you know, what's hard, what's hard at times is, uh, you know, certainly you got a young football team, uh, they're playing good defense, then you, you have the injury to the quarterback, and that puts you in a difficult situation when you have that injury to the quarterback. And, you know, Bob will get him. Sorted out playing week to week. Bomber ball on a second and five, and that one intended for Bailey. And just falls incomplete. Abdul Kenneth, like he thought he had a shot at that one as well. 
Yeah, you know, both times the, the safeties have done a great job of driving the underneath routes, right? They're really coming down on these dig plays. You'll see, you'll see kind of come down on this, and he's playing a high player, comes down, almost makes a pick right there. And thought about it. Didn't see him doing the push up. Sometimes we do see that, <laughs> the penalty push ups. So two back for the return for the Red Blacks, anticipating this punt by Jamison Sheehan. Yeah, you saw Sheehan with a low punt earlier to get it on the ground, making it tough to handle. So Ottawa wants to make sure they get the whole field covered and catch the ball, preferably in the air. And Danbridge took it off the hop, and he gets it up near the Red Black 50. So a good place for Dustin Crum to start. And this is first CFL start. He came off the bench last week after that awful injury to Jeremiah Masoli. And even though he threw three interceptions, Lapo, he did make an especially good impression when he decided to take off and run. Yeah, you know, you want a quarterback who can create with his legs. He's he's six foot four, but he rushed for 800 yards in college. He's got the ability to create with your legs because you're not going to get people open all the time. What he was able to do is create some first downs, put the ball in the end zone, using his legs. Here's Crum now, first and ten. The Ottawa 49 and handing off. Devontae Williams, as mentioned, injured the last few games and back in the lineup now for the Red Blacks, getting it up across the 50. But getting back to Dustin Crum, how well did you know him while you were still head coach here in Ottawa? Yeah, I had a couple of weeks with him, and an interesting story was I was coming home from spring break with my family, and he kind of called, and I had to, the La Police family truckster, everyone had to quiet down. I'm talking to this quarterback, and, and you're trying to talk to these guys and educate them about how great our league is and everything about it. You know, you still know they're going to pick up interception right there. The Demario Houston, and that's his fourth of the season. He also has, he has six takeaways coming into this. That's number seven for him. So another Ottawa drive quickly snuffed out, that time by turnover. It's a throw to the boundary. You're going to see a curl right here and a guy out in the flat, right? Good decision here. I like the decision to throw it. He's just he just doesn't locate it very well. He ends up putting it on the on the backside, right? And puts it in a bad spot. So the ball's interception. Good decision, right? And again, another interception for Houston, who's, who's doing a hell of a job this year. Lapo just showed up to visit and watch. Now we got him <laughs> telestrating. Oh, nice tackle chasing down Brady Oliveira for the Red Blacks and the weak side linebacker Frankie Griffin for a loss in that play. Uh, Lapo knows if he's going to come to the booth, we're going to put him to work a little bit. Yeah, I'll tell you, Frankie Griffin, like, he was a, a, a nickel or a defensive back when we had him two years ago. And then last year, Mike Benavides put him into Will Linebacker. And we just weren't sure because of his size. And I'll tell you, the first week they ran a count, we ran a counter play, and he blew up the tackle, pulling up into the hole. And, you know, he's a very good young football player. He's only going to get better and better. It's on the stat for another very good defensive player for Winnipeg, Demario Houston. It's a second 12 after the loss of two. And a look off to the left near midfield for Schoen. Yeah, he stays on his feet. He stays in bounds. And looks like he has a Blue Bomber first down for some good work after the catch for Dalton Schoen. Yeah, you know, and certainly the, the defense have done a good job. I mean, every time Zach's getting the ball out of his hand, he's getting hit. Somebody's hitting him, but the receiver's done a really good job breaking tackles to create the first down yardage. Yeah, terrific second effort there from Dalton showing you know a lot of the talk in Winnipeg was about him coming back looking even bigger stronger more fit this year than he was in his outstanding rookie season good job breaking the tackle by the boundary corner DeAndre Lamont not able to wrap him and hang on so a first down down to the Ottawa 47 Winnipeg ball in an 11 point lead second quarter and nowhere to run Maybe a yard, a push there by Oliveira to get closer to the 45. Some tough running inside Lorenzo Malden. We talked about last year's defensive player of the year. Get on that tackle. Yeah, and you can see Zach was uh, kind of concerned. That was, uh, they were running a zone read, and Malden came down, and he didn't pull it. So you could see him point to himself right after. I should have I should have pulled it and gotten out on the perimeter. Now, I wanted to ask you a little bit, just going back to Frankie Griffin. 
just wondering, was the moving of the hash marks last year for you guys a consideration in getting maybe a more mobile guy in that position? Yeah, it made it much easier, you know, because obviously that position, you know, has to cover more ground now that the hashes are, are, are tighter. So we felt that was a good move to be able to do that. Bombers have been in second long a lot. There's a deep look, uh, and it's nearly intercepted by Alonzo Adai. He and Danvers were back there with Schoen, right with him, and Adai smacking himself in the helmet for not coming up with that pick. Yeah, we've seen a die a couple times showing some frustration. You see him looking like he's going to hang low, but then getting deep, ranging to his right, left side of your screen. Had a little bit of a bump on Dalton Schoen as he arrived to the ball. There's the aforementioned Frankie Griffin on the blitz. Supplying a little bit of pressure on the play. Yeah, that's the one thing you knew about uh, a die Dwayne coming out on the draft He had range, you know playing a West Virginia but he, he was a kid who could run and cover Loved his ability to, to become a starting free safety in this league And I saw him do a great job on punt cover. And I know coach Dykes would be happy that he made a tackle of the series before on punt cover Speaking of punt cover the bombers on that now with Jamison and Sheehan near midfield to get it away Devontae Williams and coming in Dandridge too. Williams takes it Excuse me save on Scarver in on the punt return now 81 up around the 15 on that return Ottawa's defense has had its moments nearly had one there with an interception Ottawa ball for the Red Blacks. This is game number five Dwayne. This has never happened before. Yeah, absolutely remarkable and I mean, somewhat tragic when you look at the injuries. Tyree Adams comes on and gets a win, but gets injured late in that game. Obviously, the situation with Jeremiah Masoli is tough. We were talking about it before the game. You go back to 2016 in the matchup between these two teams. Since Henry Burris, Crum is the seventh different Ottawa quarterback to start against Winnipeg. Only Matt Nichols and Zach Kolaris have started for Winnipeg against Ottawa in the same time span. What a difference. And that's, we'll toss inside in the sweep to Justin Hardy. Picks up about four or five yards. Yeah, you're trying to do what you're trying to do here is get speed and space, right? Hardy's a really fast kid. You're trying to flip him a toss, let him get circle the defense in the ground, get the lineman going one way and him going the other. Good easy call for Carr to get an easy, easy completion and get him in second meeting. From now two for five and a second and five outside their 20. Nine. Get rid of it. The heat was coming on the outside in the form of Jackson Jeffco and wrapping him up in another sack for the Blue Bombers. Uh, Jeffcoat, who's battled injuries in the early part of this season, just getting going, comes into this season as you see him bottom of your screen coming into this game with one sack, but it's going to double his total here. Good speed here to outrun the tackle off the mark and then just using the those long arms to keep Devontae Williams the back off of him as he tried to step in and help out. And the booze starting to rain down here at TD Place as Richie Leone stands near his end zone. I think they're booing the officials. I think they thought <laughs> Winnipeg was offside, so. Okay. That's a better way to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Greg McRae. And bobbling that one, so no return there for Winnipeg, but still a good place again for Caleros to start. And McCray getting an opportunity in the return game where he had big success last week. This has typically been the domain of Janarian Grant for Winnipeg. Juggling of their roster this week has Carlton Agadosi in in that receiving core. McCray looking after return duties on a full-time basis. And Zach Kolaris had said in the Zoom calls this week, he'd love to see him get on the field. And when he is, he knows he's playing. He's yeah. thinking of ways of getting him the football. He loves his athleticism and deceptive speed, too. It's uh, swung out to Greg McRae, who has a big run after the catch to get it across midfield down near the Red Blacks 50. Yeah. You go ahead, Lapo. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, talking to Buck Pierce and Mumble Cray, so we just try to find ways to get him the ball as much as they can. They use him out of the backfield, put him on the ball, uh, put the ball out in the flat, so there's miscommunication from the linebackers, gives him an easy opportunity to outflank the defense. It's a great throw by Zach because he was under duress. Yeah, asking you about Ottawa for obvious reasons, but you as recently as 2019, great cup year with the offensive coordinator with Winnipeg, 
and you work with Buck Pierce. Are there aspects of this offense? A 10-yard misconduct still... penalty on the Ottawa bench. First down, Winnipeg. So penalty against the Red Blacks. But are there aspects of this, and it's going to frustrate Bob Dice, but of the Winnipeg offense that you still recognize? Yeah, there's certainly plays I, uh, that, that we used to run previous years. But the one thing I'm really uh, I'm excited to watch film each week is to see how Buck has evolved it with, you know, he's got a great coaching staff working with him, with Marty and Kevin. And and, and certainly Zach, the, the pass game looks different because of what Zach's done, like his, his uh, how he's adapted it to his strengths. Winnipeg first and 10 at the Ottawa 41 after that penalty against the Red Blacks. It's been uh, tough sledding inside on the ground for the Blue Bombers. Ball carriers Nick Dembski that time. And a short carry setting up yet another second and long coming up here for Winnipeg. Uh, a little bit better. There's our guy Buck, right? You know, he did. I talked to him last week. And he, he did say he occasionally goes back to the archives every week to find something that we ran through, whether 16, 17, 18, and 19. But you know, he does a super job getting them prepared each week. And that relationship goes a long way back. I remember when you were head coach of the Bombers yeah, and he was your starting quarterback. quarterback. 2010, right? He went to the Great Cup in 2011 against the Kahari BC. Jones, Kahari Joe, the other coordinator there, there was yeah. back in 2002. Well, we're, that, that's, we're just old. We're that, old people. That's going way back <laughs> to Young Lapo. Really Young Lapo. Off to the left, and that's completed. And inside, and a first down for Winnipeg. Dembski on the receiving end now. Yeah, you'll just see uh, an outbreaking route. Right, you're going to see it on the three receiver side. These guys are going to clear out, open it up for the inside throw here on the inside by Dembski. He's got inside position, right? You just got to locate this football, let him run away, and, and Zach does a really good job of doing that to get an easy throw on the outside to put them in a really good, they, they, they threw right through field goal range. Now they're in a range, they can do whatever they want on this part of the field. Uh, tell me a little bit about the kind of development of Nick Dembski's role for you in this Winnipeg offense. Yeah, when, when, when we found, when we heard he was a free agent, I said, just bring him. We've been looking for a guy who can do multiple things, and, you know, the more you got around him, the more he can carry the ball, the more things he can do, and we tried to use him on speed sweeps and make him a nightmare. Polaris gets away from the pressure, and he completes that, and looks like another first down for the Bombers inside the 20 to Wolotarski. Before that play, with an 11-0 score, the score in first downs was 11-0 for Winnipeg. Now watch Wolotarski is going to come right to left in the formation. He was wide open, waving his hands for a long time. Kolaris had to elude that rush first before yeah. he could throw that ball. And I would Procedure, say, no end, Winnipeg. It's a five-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. The thing I would say about what Zach has brought, there was a good offense there with the, the good talent, and he has made it an elite offense with his ability, what he just did there. He can use his legs, move around, find throws, and he, he's been tremendous at using his legs. And again, he's he's a veteran guy. You know, the people can't get down to Dustin Crum. Zach's seen so many pictures over the years, and, and so the ball comes out of his hands so much faster, right? You know, I think somebody's talk about these young quarterbacks expect them to produce right away and it, it takes time. So that completion of Olatarski is negated because of procedure so it's back out to the 34 of Ottawa and a first and 15 as Crum looks things over things must be flying fast and this is first CFL start and as mentioned so they didn't get the first down there but it's 11 nothing in first downs as well for Winnipeg thorough domination of Ottawa. Trying to press for more points now past the midway point of the first half. It's complete and wide open. Dalton shown inside the 20 and down near the 15 for the 12th first down for Winnipeg in this first half. So, you know, you look at a guy like Zach Kolaros, a veteran quarterback who really seems to have found his stride since coming to Winnipeg. Tempo. Always a good player as we're going to see them go tempo, tempo here. right here. Yep. So here we go. Back to work quickly after the first down. Complete. Yeah. Just like that. And obviously, uh, you know, every time they've hit a big play today, you've seen Winnipeg go tempo. Zach fell down on one of them. Uh, they, they hit a pass play before. So obviously, saw it and they, Buck saw that they wanted to go tempo after a big play. Yeah, you'll see Dembski kind of hook it up. Just off tackle there. Quick hitter for the touchdown. So tell me the, the mindset, the philosophy behind as a coach or an offensive coordinator going tempo after the big play. Yeah, you know, you can make a, a coded word 
One word tells everybody what to do. Get up to the line of scrimmage. You can call that. You can call it in a headset, which we have help with up here calling the communicator. And then the quarterback tells people, and you're hoping to get people misaligned and not ready to play. And that's what looked, looked like what happened on that one. They weren't ready to play defense. They were in a four-by-one set. The boundary guys hadn't come over. So that's what happens. Paul Lapoli. Well, going to be in the booth guys, a couple next weeks week, a couple, couple of weeks from now. now. Yeah. A nice tutorial here nice coming in using that telestrator. So <laughs> Bombers add to their lead. Down of the season as that Bomber offense is working quickly, Dwayne. Yeah, Zach Kalaros going to his right. Dembski from that formation is kind of sliding the other way from where Zach is rolling. Caused him to get lost in coverage a little bit. He just sits it down. Easy completion. Dembski does the rest for the touchdown. <laughs> Another proud new daddy, Nick Dembski. Another proud Winnipegger, too, with so many that have played for the Blue Bombers and starred with them. So they kick off again. And now it's an 18 nothing game Winnipeg thorough domination. With five minutes left until halftime and the Red Blacks have not been able to do a thing on offense in this debut at quarterback or first start for Dustin Crum. He came off the bench last week. Yeah and you're a little limited through absolutely no fault of Dustin Crum's obviously you're you're going to run a little bit of a limited package. You're trying not to to overstress a young quarterback. You're doing the best you can whereas by contrast as you heard Lapo talk about you've got Zach Kalaros who's been in the league since 2012. This is a guy who anything you want to run you can throw at him. Minus five net yards for Ottawa in this game. Positive yardage there for Devontae Williams who gets it up closer to the 45. Williams who was on the practice roster in Winnipeg in 2021 and said he learned a lot from Andrew Harris coming into the CFL. Yeah said much like Brady Oliveira that Andrew, Andrew Harris was a guy who really Took the young running back under his wing and showed him the ropes. Throws in tight coverage and completes it too. Just shy of the 50 and close to a first down. It is indeed as the cheer comes up for the Red Blacks who have their first first down of this game. And it comes with 422 left in the first half. And they work tempo. Back to it. And Crum takes off. We saw this a lot last week when he came off the bench in Hamilton. He ran for 91 yards, and we see him call his own number there for a gain of about, oh, about eight, nine yards, so second and short coming up. Yeah, I'm not sure he called his own number, but it ended up being his own number with signals crossed in the backfield there. Good adaptation there by the young QB, who, as you mentioned, has is certainly well within his comfort zone running with the football. The guy who rushed for close to 800 yards in his best season in college and former bomber Terrell Pigram was with them in training camp at a good preseason game before being let go comes in short yardage now number three and goes right side and picks up another first down back to back first downs for the Red Blacks now late in the half trying to get something going finally on offense. Yeah, this could be an interesting opportunity for Pigram as well a guy who I think a lot of CFL fans were kind of excited about in a league that needs to find and develop young QBs. Had a nice preseason for the for the Bombers. Bubble, 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 bubble. On that bubble, off to Nate Bahar, and he gets it inside the 50, so picks up about two, three yards, a second and long coming up for the Red Blacks. And just typical of what you'd expect with a young QB in there. Kahari Jones giving him a high percentage, high percentage plays just to chip away. Minute warning. Red Blacks with the ball in Bomber territory. I don't know about you guys, but my favorite thing of the half so far, the combination of Paul Lapolis, Dwayne Ford, mm. and Rod Smith. And I'm not even being funny. That was fantastic. It was great. Thank you, Kate. That means a lot. Lapo's had some fun and and Dwayne's been a good sport about it, giving Lapo <laughs> lots of time. He, he let him have his telestrator pen and everything. So the good teamwork up here and a lot of fun being back. And, Watching a game from this perspective, which uh, well, I'll have to ask Mr. Lapolis about that later on. It's a little different than the stress, I'm sure, of being down on the sideline or upstairs as an offensive coordinator in the middle of game action. But well, L Lapo did acknowledge that you and I, Rod, are much easier to work with than the people on the panel there you, in oh, studio. 
as well. So she said such a nice thing, and you're going. There. I can't be part of this, Dwayne. You know, I, you're just gonna throw me under the bus. <laughs> no, right? You know he said it. <laughs> oh, you heard him say it. <laughs> Sorry, laughing. Seriously, how could you say it? In the Winnipeg 40, and it's high. It was a first and ten. Red Blacks had a little something going here. That's intended for Justin Hardy, but a second down coming up now, trying to get something on the board before halftime. Yeah, Hardy here working out of the slot. You're going to see window closes down pretty quickly on Dustin Crum. Evan Holm has been a revelation for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at halfback this season. Mike O'Shea talks about him as having some of the best feet he's seen on a defensive back in, the, in this league. They're at the Bomber 40. They're trailing by 18 points. Crum gets away, almost got away from Willie Jefferson, but not enough to get a good throw away. And pressure from number five rears its head again, and a third down and 10 is coming up. And Lewis Ward is coming on. And you'll notice Jefferson again lined up on the inside. They get into a second and long pass rush situation. And that time just a quick sort of slap and skip step to get past Zach Peleos and into the backfield. Lewis Ward is 12 for 13. His longest this season is 50. And this one coming under that at about 47 where Richie Leone will put it down inside the left hash and Lewis Ward like Castillo threading the needle from a longer distance and the Red Blacks do have some points to show for this difficult first half the field goal by Ward and an 18 to 3 lead an investigation into a botched kidnapping uncovers long held secrets don't miss I'll say it like Wayne Ford don't miss the HBO Max original limit. How am I doing on that? HBO Max original limited series. Full Circle is the show. You can stream it now only on Crave. No one can do it like Ford can. Uh, you made me want to watch this show. <laughs> I am. I will be watching or PVRing or both. Full Circle. You were in, with Marshall last night in Montreal, and you really brought it on the. Uh, well, sh it's Shark Week. It's Shark Week. Shark Week. Right. Yeah. Michael Wakefield coming in and taking down Brady Oliveira for the loss. Winnipeg's had trouble establishing their running game inside. Yeah, Wakefield just blowing through that gap into the backfield. Darn near took the handoff. Wakefield, who started his career here in Ottawa, spent a little bit of time with Montreal before finding his way back to the nation's capital in free agency, adding nice depth. To a pretty good Ottawa defensive line. Oliveira taken down for a loss of three. Six carries, five yards for the CFL's leading rusher in this half. And Ottawa's defense stands up again. The starting safety, Alonzo Adai, makes the play. And still over two minutes to go. The Red Blacks got a field goal last time out, and they're about to get the ball back. Yeah, and here you're going to see Adai playing a little closer to the line of scrimmage. We've seen him. Covering deep on pass plays, but Ty Cranston's got deep. This time, a die playing down close to the box. He's got Dembski tracks him across that formation, makes a quick tackle. A die in his second year for West Virginia. Two returners back for the punt by Jamison Sheehan. One of them, Savon Scarver. A flag comes out. Some time count coming up. Brandon Dandridge, the other one for Ottawa, awaiting that punt. Time count violation, Winnipeg number 18. That's a 10 yard penalty, remains third down. So obviously, a, an uphill climb here for the Ottawa Red Blacks, but the defense on that last possession really grabbing some momentum. We'll see if maybe special teams and offense can follow that cue. It has been the Red Black strength this season. And Sheehan is put back inside the 15, standing on the 12. And some pressure coming. Ottawa close to getting to that one. Taken down inside the 40. 
This is Dandridge, and he is knocked down hard. Coming in, Jared Beeksma, former Tiger Cat, among those in the cover unit for the Blue Bombers. But Ottawa and Crum, a decent place to work with still lots of time, about a minute and a half to go till halftime. And watch for 43, Jared Beeksma, the University of Guelph product, with the finishing shot on the Ottawa returner. From the 46. A tough indoctrination to say the least for Dustin Crum. They were able to move down and get in field goal range last time. He has time. He steps in. Deep ball open receiver. No. Save on Scarber was in behind coverage. He had a shot at a touchdown. Yeah, you can see this route develop. It's a great read. Absolutely the right decision by Dustin Crum. Well-placed football. Yeah, and it's almost one of those where Scarver had too much time to think about it. He's tracking the ball. He knows he's wide open in behind Demario Houston along that sideline. Massive missed opportunity here late in the first half. In behind Demario Houston. He had just the end zone ahead if he could have hung on. Second down. 126 of the clock to half time. Blitz coming. Oh, nearly picked off. Another one that could have been caught. The strong side linebacker, Alden Darby, with a shot there at the interception. And who knows what could have happened after that. So it's third down and 10 coming up here for Ottawa. Yeah, we talked earlier about up against a good team. This very small margin of error as you saw in that one the receiver losing his footing on the play but <laughs> Winnipeg's only going to give you so many chances to hit that deep shot you got to take advantage when you get a man open like that the lone returners Greg McRae on the Leone punt at the 20 and at the cross to about the 26 112 to go bombers deep in their zone 18 to 3 Winnipeg with the lead trying to improve 2 5 and 1 Kate Davis Matt and Milt coming up with uh, some thoughts on this one and well I mean you would have expected Winnipeg to be playing well here in Ottawa I mean they haven't they've won five straight here in Ottawa it goes back a ways since they've lost a game here. But it had, up until recent minutes anyway, total bomber domination. And yes, missed opportunities for the Red Blocks. Some mistakes as well. Greg McRae is the ball carrier up across the 30. And Adam O'Claire getting the start for the first time in his career at middle linebacker, the product of Laval. Yeah, we've seen him play a little bit at will and an opportunity in, in various packages defensively for Ottawa over the course of the last couple of years. I mentioned earlier number six overall pick coming out of that great Laval program in 2020. It's nice to see him get a, an opportunity to do different things because I think versatility is a big part of what Adam O'Claire brings to the table in a CFL defense. The man in the middle had been Tyron Greta who's hurt. And before that Javon Santos Knox is penciled in to be their starting middle linebacker. Douglas Coleman the strong side backer chasing down or O'Claire excuse me in Coleman. Brady Olivero but not enough for the first down, so another third coming up, and Sheehan comes back on for Winnipeg. We'll take a look here. Quick shot to the flats for Oliveira. Nice job by Coleman. The Red Blacks early sack leader. Quick start to the season. Coleman had that penalty earlier on after the whistle that extended a Winnipeg drive and turned a field goal into a touchdown. 15 point bomber lead. Half minute to go until halftime. Sheehan, the Australian, gets it away. And that one heads out of bounds. Uh, up at the 45 for Ottawa. Just 21 seconds to go here in the half and a lot of times you know had the had it been a deeper punt or a little deeper in their own territory you'd think with a young quarterback that they just try and get out of the half mistake free but you know here 
getting closer to midfield. Bit of temp temptation to try and get into field goal range. See if he can salvage a little bit more from what's been a pretty tough half. Blitz is coming for Crom. Can't get it away. Taken down again. It's Adam Big Hill again on the blitz. And another sack registered by that Winnipeg defense. Run. You know, I love that Adam Big Hill, he can cover deep, obviously stop the run, but huge fan when Biggie is on the blitz. And here you're going to see they load up in the middle. He's unblocked, just miscommunication from the Ottawa offensive line. You can see that he's coming. They don't get it picked up. A guy with that short a line coming a gap. That short a line to the quarterback. It's got to be a priority in your protection. He's had a couple. Willie Jefferson, two. Jackson Jeffcoat, four sacks in this first half. For the Bombers as Crum takes a knee. Not happy here at TD Place. They have the most recent points. A field goal, but not nearly enough offensively for Bob Dice's Ottawa Red Blacks. And a, and a pretty good show for that Winnipeg defense. Willie Jefferson, Big Hill, and company as they're still comfortably if they don't take the penalty earlier on and if Scarver gets that touchdown, Winnipeg's still the better team, but it's a closer game. Yeah, I mean, you heard the panel talk about it at halftime. This could very easily, just with those two factors you talked about, be a 14 to 10 football game as we start the second half rather than Winnipeg being up by two scores. Brandon Dandridge in a good return. Red black football to start this second half as he gets it up across the Ottawa 45. Things didn't go at all well for Dustin Crum, especially through a quarter and a half. Picked up a little bit later on as they get down for a field goal, but it's been a rough indoctrination. Yeah, it certainly has, and you knew he was going to face a lot of pressure from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. But, you know, I mean, this isn't a case of, of Dustin Crum, for example, holding on to the ball too long. I mean, there are times where they've got to look after things in terms of blitz pickup and protection to give him a chance to make those throws. They put it on the ground to Devontae Williams to start this second half, and he gets it up across the Ottawa 50. And again, a three and three or four for the Red Bulls. But yeah, that, that says it all. Five completions on 12 attempts, just 20 yards, and one was picked off. Yeah, but it's, again, even at that They've had opportunities to, to make this a closer game. And when those same opportunities come up here in the second half, they've got to make them, give themselves an opportunity. You saw Nick Arbuckle, who had started the season, first couple of games for the Red Blacks, the backup quarterback in this one. His crumb stays in from the Ottawa 51 and a second down. It's complete to C.O.C. Mariner has a catch in this game. And that is his first for the Red Blacks in this one and his fifth on the season and a first down Ottawa. Yeah, seriously, Mariner, big target. Gonna see him drive the defender off, quick slant to get in front of him. Nicely placed ball, good effort on the catch. Moving the sticks into Bomber territory. A couple of receivers from Utah State, him and Savon Scarver, teammates again here in Ottawa. That's handed off and trying to break it outside is Williams. He does pick up a few yards. Jack Round game, look after some of the pass blocking, etc. here in the Canadian Football League. Second and eight now at the Winnipeg 45, right at it. Crum under the heat, gets away, likes to run. We've seen that before. And another good run. He had only one in the first half for nine yards. That one easily another first down. He ran for 91 yards off the bench last week against Hamilton. And <laughs> we talked about this in the Hamilton game last week, is given the situation at quarterback in Ottawa right now. You love the positive play, but when you're Bob Dice, you're holding your breath a little bit every time your quarterback is running with the ball and putting himself at risk of taking hits. But, I mean, it's a legitimate weapon, a legitimate asset for Dustin Crum. you got to take advantage of it, too. He gets it down to the 31 and a first down Ottawa. And swinging it out now for Bahar. Turns the corner and Evan Holm escorts him out. And a flag does come out. Yeah, save on Scarver, I think, is going to get called for an illegal block here as he was coming back to try and help out. 
once Bahar caught the ball, looked like he gave his man a shot from behind. Holding, Ottawa number 81. Ten yard penalty, repeat first down. The veteran referee Dave Foxcroft working his 350th game and announcing that penalty against Scarver. Well, congratulations to Dave. You're going to see Bahar is the inside receiver here, but we'll keep an eye on Scarver on the outside as he's trying to block to help out. There's a little bubble, but Scarver, when he gets beaten by his man, has to snatch him to try and slow him down. Making it a first and 20, negating that play to Bahar. And Crum decides, why not take off again with the pressure coming? Not nearly as much as Holmes. Holmes, excuse me, make sure he is taken down with a much shorter gain. We do have a second and long coming up here for Ottawa. And I suspect that Kahari Jones may have Dustin Crum working on his hook slide a little bit in the week ahead. In the name of self preservation. But yeah, he's such a threat to run that, quite honestly, his first couple reads aren't there. I think that this is going to be his best option to try and keep the sticks moving is to create with his legs. He has three carries for 29 yards now. And, gee, somebody has a knockdown on Winnipeg's defensive line. I wonder who it is. Yes, we've seen this movie before. Willie Jefferson has already welcomed Dustin Crum to the Canadian Football League with a sack. Here you're going to see Willie standing up. He's on the loop on this one, then hanging back. Setting up a field goal try, and that was the 60th knockdown, by the way, in the great career of one Willie Jefferson. Forcing a third down now, Lewis Ward. He's one for one and looking to double Ottawa's point total and get a little bit closer. Now a 12-point Winnipeg game, 18 to 6. The most recent six scored by Ottawa. Willie Jefferson gets the sacks, gets the knocks downs, and been great for Winnipeg. They have at least 60 quarterback sacks and pass knockdowns. Matthew Shinetti, he has proven to be a quarterback's worst nightmare. Yeah, and a shout-out to our stats guru, or one of them, John Perlberg, for that stat. Very unique to Willie Jefferson, and I was watching him pregame. He does what you would imagine you'd also see in volleyball, setting the ball, kind of pushing it in the air. He was working alongside defensive back coach Jordan Younger, the former Argos DB, and I asked him, what is so key to Willie doing that? He goes, anticipation. I asked Willie, what's the key? He said, down and distance. That knockdown came second and 14. Guys? He almost looked like he was playing volleyball there, knocking it down up at the net. And helping his offense get the ball back, although it was a field goal by Lewis Ward to get them three more on the board. But how many times have we seen him do that in his career? Well, 60, Rod. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen all 60? You know what? I kind of put the ball on the tee there, didn't I? You really did. But yeah, Willie Jefferson, neat to see him working, actually working on drills, right? To reading the quarterback's arm angle, timing the, the release and so on put himself in position to make those kind of plays now in fairness stupid as that sounds thank you rod uh have you seen all 60 have you really <laughs> Wayne? let's be literal about this here's well, the four I, man I rush yeah, deep ball and just beyond the outstretched fingertips of greg mccray sorry well and this is the, the situation that you, you heard lapo talk about with greg mccray and that kind of versatility right sometimes he's a receiver sometimes he's a running back so here he's lined up in the backfield well this match is one of the fastest guys on the field up against the middle linebacker and as good as Adam O'Claire is he ain't, ain't gonna keep up speed wise on that kind of route with Greg McRae just a near missed opportunity but a great setup by offensive coordinator Buck Pierce so close for Winnipeg still with a 12-point lead hunting it away Jamison Sheehan Outside is 30. Again, two returners back for the Red Blacks. This one heading off to the left. Brandon Dandridge with it. And he gets away from a would-be tackler and up across the 30. And finally taken down around the 33 by Brian Cole on the tackle. Well, late in the first half, they got down into field goal range to start the second half. They did as well. Still lots of work ahead for Dustin Crump. Misconduct penalties. We talked about this one earlier that went against Douglas Coleman that 
gave Winnipeg a chance to score a touchdown. They took another one shortly after. This one was called on the sidelines. This is Ottawa general manager Sean Burke down there who has given it to the officials. Is he earned the flag that you heard called against the Ottawa sideline? Costly. Deep look. Right side. Coverage is there. Abu Durami Soiree on COC Marin, and it falls incomplete. Well, and these are, are shots that, you know, not necessarily high percentage, but one that you've got to take every so often to keep the defense honest, quite frankly. Pretty good protection here from the Ottawa front. You've got to hold, obviously, a long time for a deep shot like that. We have a challenge flag coming out now from the Ottawa sideline. Yeah, not shocked to see them take a shot here. Yeah, Bob Dice, you saw him signaling to the head, maybe looking for a headshot on the quarterback as he was taken down on that play. Ottawa is challenging that there was roughing the passer on the previous play. We're going to review the play. As it stands a second down, but reviewing this one. That if reversed could move the Red Blacks up 15. Bob Dice thinks roughing the passer. Back with a ruling on that after this. Let's have another look at this, Dwayne. Yeah, Walker comes from the defensive tackle position here. He's going to get in on the initial tackle. I also wonder, as Crum started to go down, you see the arm up top around the helmet. Was it roughing the passer? Here is the announcement from Dave Foxcroft. After review by the command center, the ruling on the field stands. There is no roughing the passer. Ottawa has charged a timeout and has no more challenges for the remainder of the game. And so without that, it stands at a second and ten after the incompletion. The intended long ball for COC Mariner that went incomplete. So Ricky Walker is off the hook. The ball remains nosing up to the red black 33 down 18 to 6 under 10 minutes to go in the third quarter off to the right and a first down save on Scarborough has it. Scarborough who nearly had a what looked like it would be a touchdown catch in the first half but just couldn't hang on in a deep ball but he has that one to move the sticks for the red blocks yeah and it'll seem like a small thing but with a lot of young guys on the field and particularly at quarterback Anytime you're shaking off adversity and moving forward, even something as simple as that, right? A, a loss challenge, you're in second and long, and so on. But just to ignore that, go on with the next play and pick up a first down. Take that as a positive and build on it. Scarver now with two catches for 25 yards. Play action fake. Moving out to the left and throwing that one well shy of the intended target, which was Scarver again. So a second down coming up. A tough throw there for for Crum running to his left and kind of in a situation because of the pursuit unable to really get himself turned up field at all to deliver that throw. This is part one of a Saturday doubleheader after this off to Mosaic for another meeting between the Riders and Stampeders three weeks ago their game went to overtime with Saskatchewan winning it. Always enjoy the battle of the Dickinson brothers. Absolutely. Craig got the better of Dave on that one three weeks ago meeting again. Meeting again in the backfield, Walker. And this time, really hits Crum hard and takes him down on another sack by Winnipeg. Yeah, this Winnipeg defensive line. So tough to handle. Ricky Walker's lining up right in the middle of things. You see linebackers walked up. Walker just beating his block to get there. Second sack of the season for Walker. Fifth for the Blue Bombers on this day. And the punt by Leone. Chases McCray inside the 15. Alonzo would die. And on the Pop. coverage. Might be Rocco Duke. That's for y'all. I love y'all. Hey, happy birthday to my brother. So Ricky Walker got some heat on earlier and then got the sack there. Now we give so much attention to the Winnipeg defensive ends, Jefferson and Jeffcoat. You think about the guys that they've rolled through on the inside. Obviously, Jake Thomas 
has been the fixture, but it's gone from Steven Richardson to Casey Sales. Now Ricky Walker taking the majority of the snaps. They just keep producing. Back to Polaris, standing inside his 20. Looks deep over the middle, and Brady Oliveira breaks free inside the 40. Abdul Kenna finally takes him down inside the 25. Bombers, quick strike in business. The CFL's leading rusher has had a lot more success in the air in this game now. Yeah, mixing things up formation-wise, you're going to see Oliveira's going to free release from the backfield, and he's taking it straight down the seam here. Just caught Eau Claire a little bit flat-footed. Flat Adai's trying to come over from his free safety spot to provide some help over the top. But well-placed ball from the veteran quarterback, Kolaros. And again, nicely drawn-up play call from Buck Pierce. We're going to have to ask Lapo if that was one that came from the archives he talked about. Well, Oliver in the first half, leading rusher, had one yard and five carries. That was a gain of 63. Through the air, here's Walatarski. Got a good game, gets it inside the 10 now for Winnipeg. Another first down. It'll be first and goal. Bombers threatening again. And Drew Walatarski. It's been such a reliable receiver. Nothing flashy about his game. University of Minnesota product, former supplemental draft pick for the Bombers. Just keeps producing out there. Three touchdowns on the season and one to get Winnipeg much closer now. Take a break, be back here at TD Place. And I'm not going to fall back. And then I asked him, how much are you trying to talk yourself through that as you're gaining more and more experience? He goes, I watch a video of Marshawn Lynch. Now, I'll go ahead and edit out what Marshawn Lynch says. But ultimately, Brady Oliveira, like Marshawn Lynch, just wants to hit a. And I'll let you in. Uh, I'll let you insert what that last two words could be. I think we can figure it out, Matthew. Thank you for that. But that running style, that north-south and. You know, you think about that style and getting in behind the pants. It's, uh, Andrew Harris, not too many better than he was for that, too, squaring up, running hard. Oliveira, the think to him, the look. Into the end zone, Winnipeg, touchdown. Drew Wolitarski has TD number four in 2023. And this play to me ends up looking a lot like the Dembski touchdown in the first half. If you've got flow going to the right between quarterback going that way, running back releasing out to the flat. You're going to see Dembski this time is coming from the outside, but watch. Wolitarski comes outside in exactly as Dembski did in the first half and just sits down as everybody's running the other way to cover the flats, cover that side of the field. Claros dumps it back to the inside to the open receiver. A fine season for 82 came into the CFL back in 2017. Had over 600 yards receiving back in 2018. And not close to that since, but on a good pace so far. And in terms of touchdowns, four catches, 70 yards, and his fourth touchdown of the season in a three play, 86 yard drive as Winnipeg quickly answers back. Yeah, Drew Wolitarski, as I mentioned, picked in the supplemental draft in 2017. Winnipeg used a third round pick that I would say has more than paid dividends for them. Guy who quickly became a starter for this team and has just been a fixture in their lineup ever since. On the, to that point, like the continuity of this Bombers lineup, we talked about it at the quarterback position. They've only started two different quarterbacks against Ottawa in this matchup in the time. Ottawa has started seven different quarterbacks. But Buddy, you look throughout their roster, the continuity that they've had, Keep and I know going. it was a, a big hey, goal hey, for hey, them hey. coming through the pandemic after winning that Grey Cup in 2019, that it was a priority to keep as much of the team together as they could going into 2021 with a short training camp and so on. And it's just gone forward from there, and that's, there's a reason why this team has remained so competitive through the years. And, when, and not just in the receiving core, of course. You look at the offensive line since 19. Yeah. A couple of changes inside, but a lot of consistency on this club. Yeah, and some of the changes you look at are changes that have come from within. Guys who are already there. Danbridge on the return. Now a 19-point Winnipeg lead. It's up around the 30.
a great cup with Edmonton back in 2015 against Ottawa. Later went on to Saskatchewan and then found quite a home in Winnipeg these last few years. Defensive player of the year in 2019 and another defensive player of the year Adam Big Hill involved in a tackle there on Jackson Bennett. Yeah, you think about Willie Jefferson and his his career path. This is a guy who started his college career at Baylor as a wide receiver. Moves like, imagine this guy lining up his wideout. But moves from wide receiver to tight end, eventually over to defensive line, where he has clearly found a home. Well, you like him on those 50-50 balls over the sideline, wouldn't you? It's coming, gets it away, near a first down. Evan Holm taking down Justin Hardy, but it looks like he will at the first, right at midfield. Let's see where they spot the ball. Indeed, it does look like it is enough, nosing up to midfield. And watch Jackson Bennett in the win in the Ottawa backfield here. Stepping up, he knows that blitz is coming. He's got to get there. Took the worst of that collision with Brandon Alexander coming up the middle. Adam Big Hill coming off this other edge delivers a hit, but nice execution there against the blitz for the Red Blacks. Right at the 55 and a first and 10, Ottawa trailing by 19, rolling to the right, trying to get away from Big Hill. Picks up a few more yards. We have seen Crum run the ball more often here in the second half just the one carry in the first yeah whatever it takes to keep those sticks moving Good. for Dustin Crum quick look see a run lane take advantage positive play get yourself into second and medium five yards exactly so the second and five coming up the Winnipeg 50. We've said this before, but the Red Blacks offense, it's nice to have Lewis Ward. Field goals can be nice, but they got to find the end zone. More pressure coming. He steps up and he gets away and he gets it inside the 45. So with the legs of Crum working again, another Red Blacks first down. A nice escape here for the young QB. You'll see this pocket closed down around him and Winnipeg defensive coordinator Richie Hall loading it up as we see Adam Big Hill up around the line of scrimmage an awful lot. Well, he had one carry for nine yards in the first. He now has five carries for 41. At the Winnipeg 43. Handing off to Ben. He grinds his way for about three more yards getting down near the 40. So, yeah, I mean, you can bring it up there within Lewis Ward range, but you, you got to be at this point or at what point do you start thinking three down football here. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you, you give it a little bit of time into the fourth quarter at least. But yeah, tough to uh, carve down that 19 point deficit three points at a time, especially when you got to contain Winnipeg's offense at the same time. A big second down for this Red Blacks offense. Second and seven at the Winnipeg 40. Crum with time. He steps up. He's going to run again. And he gets close to see where the spot is. Another Red Blacks first down in the legs of Dustin Crum. They put it down actually a little bit shy at the 34. Had to get to the 33, but third down coming up and got some big players coming on now and short yardage quarterback Terrell Pigra and at this point after a few runs in a row Dustin Crum might be just as happy that they marked him short and get the short yardage team out there just so he can catch his breath on the sidelines for a play third down and less than a yard late third quarter Pigra the ex blue bomber there in training camp and let go just recently when Dakota Prukop became available and Pigram should have it as Crum will head back out on the field as this Ottawa drive will continue. Offside on Winnipeg on the defensive line. Five yard penalty, first down. So take the five instead and the first down a little bit closer for the Red Blacks. Down inside the 30, put it down at the 29. Let's go. Let's go. See that bomber D line starting to creep a little bit early there. Red Blacks generating a little momentum here as the third quarter winds down. Longest drive for the Red Blacks in this one. This is the 10th play inside the Winnipeg 30. 
Ingram completes it. Coming back. Neat behind. First down inside the 15. Red Lodge definitely have something on the go now. And as we talked about, they need to get into the end zone to get back into this game. Yeah, Bahar lines up out wide on this one. He's going to work towards the middle of the field. He's got Jalen Acklin clearing things out a little bit inside. Nice job to make the first two miss and get north-south. First trip to the red zone for the Ottawa Red Blacks. Trailing 25 to 6. From the Winnipeg 13. Late third quarter. Might be the final play. Not quite. Taken down with six seconds to go by Adam Big Hill. On COC Mariner. Another tackle for Big Hill. Yeah, you're going to see Mariner in this one. Just works underneath. They get the fullback in on the play. Gosselin, who's runs an under from the other side, but you can see he's basically just waiting to try and create traffic. A rub, if you will. For the receiver coming from the other side. And that tackle by Big Hill on Mariner forces a loss of two. Second and 12, Winnipeg 15. With a big second down. And closer to the end zone for Mariner and down incomplete. Down around the two or three. So third down. Ottawa getting closer at the end of three, but still a long leading it. 25 to 6. Seen a little bit of life out of that red black offense, but only enough to get into field goal range now, Dwayne. Yeah, and obviously disappointing that they, they may be settling for that, but again, you've got to take small victories, look for positives, look at the way that they've responded to a little bit of adversity in the second half of this football game and, and try and build on it. Listen, I know ultimately in, in the game of professional football, it's all about wins and losses, but we're still early in the season, kind of wrapping up the first third of the season here, that Ottawa is going to have a long way to go where they're trying to figure out this quarterback situation. I think Dustin Crum has done some some positive things. Certainly has in the second half, especially the running complimenting as well as Lewis Ward does come out. They want to make sure they get some points to show for it, but still not able to get into the end zone. Ward is three for three. Make it a 25 to nine game for Winnipeg is you talked about Dustin Crum, the fourth started QB in five games the Red Blacks have used and needing that time to cut his teeth and he has looked better in the second half after a really tough first. Yeah and it's within the, the realm of Dustin Crum's Canadian Football League career. Ultimately he's now into call it his second full game. And the Canadian Football League came on during the first half last week. You know, I mean, <laughs> that's a huge amount of experience, relatively speaking, for him. That just the number of reps that he's gotten compared to where he was a week ago. That you're going to see that that growth early on. I think as a as a positive thing. With Jeremiah Masoli not ready at the start of the season, Nick Arbuckle made the first two starts, then Tyree Adams and a victory for Ottawa. And he got hurt, and then Masoli injured, of course, last week. And the horrible moment, and from coming on, and now the fourth starter, as mentioned, for Ottawa. So it's Winnipeg's offense on the field now with their lead cut by three, and that's Brady Oliveira, or excuse me, Nick Dembski. Yeah, and... You know, this is part of the, the challenge for Ottawa in terms of trying to get back in this football game. Well, technically, it's a, a two-score game, 16-point deficit right now. But you've also got Winnipeg, which is such a great closing team with their run game. And whether it's going to be Dembski and Bailey on the receiver runs, you get McCray involved as well. But obviously, Brady Oliveira in that offensive line, they can eat up that clock. Empty backfield, deep look, right, wide open. That one is dropped. And someone you know, we're used to seeing making clutch plays, one of the top receivers in the game, Dalton Schoen, couldn't hang on. Yeah, Schoen's going to come out of the slot on this one, taking full advantage of that waggle and just accelerating to get in behind Abdul Kenna. Claris drops it in there, but as you mentioned, a rare miss for Dalton Schoen. Kind of the king of the home run ball a year ago. 
And so a break for the Red Blacks as they'll get it back early in this fourth quarter. Jamison Sheehan on to punt it away for Winnipeg. But I guess that kind of makes them even on the missed deep balls. On the Scarver one in the first half. Yeah. at the 15. Picks up three. Brian Cole, another special teams tackle for him. As Crum and that Ottawa offense heads back out on the field. As hard as it is to contain Winnipeg's offense, equally difficult to face a Winnipeg D whose leaders Jefferson and Big Hill have come exactly as advertised today. It's made it that much tougher for the first CFL start for Dustin Crum. The heat they put on. A couple of sacks you mentioned by Big Hill and Jefferson, Jeff Coat. Tough defense to face in your first CFL start. Pulls it back, completes the pass to Hardy across the 30 and more. Justin Hardy. He cuts outside. Cross midfield to Mario Houston. Finally takes him down near the Winnipeg 35, and that is a big play the Red Blacks desperately need. That yeah, sure was. Justin Hardy turning a short one into an explosion play. Hardy coming out of the slot. In this instance, his quick turnout, and I love his work after the catch on this one. Couple of great moves to take it into Bomber territory. Gain of 53 yards, first and 10 from the 38. That's complete. Jalen Ackley, their top receiver last year, just his second catch. Ackland had a, a very quiet 2023. Yeah, Ackland had a season high four catches last week against Hamilton. Obviously, the hope for Ottawa is that that's a, a sign of him starting to get going. Yeah, through Ottawa's first few games. Very quiet for a guy who's been a perennial thousand yard guy. Two catches for nine yards in this one. Throwing again from completing it to Ackland again. They're just shy of the 30 on that second and five. So still a few yards away from a first down. Third and two, and then Lewis Ward's range again. Picking away, taking what they're getting. Going here on third. Ward stays in the sidelines. Fourth quarter. 11.07 and counting. And a big third down here for Ottawa. Brom, the heat is coming. He gets rid of it. And Ackland has it. And he has a first down Ottawa inside the Winnipeg 20. Blitz coming. Crum got rid of it quickly. Yeah, good job by Crum to know it's coming and that the ball's got to be out quickly. But also there you saw Devontae Williams stepping up to meet the blitzing free safety, Brandon Alexander. Give his quarterback enough time to deliver the rock. Second straight impressive drive for this Ottawa Red Blacks offense. The last one ended in a field goal. Needing the end zone again. And that one coming in, it's Bahar. He's inside the 15. And he has about five more yards for Ottawa. Second down coming up. Again, the Red Blacks generate, generating momentum, getting a drive going. Now it's about finishing. But they weren't able to do last time they got this deep. Five straight completions for Dustin Crum who's looking more comfortable now after a difficult start as this game goes on. And the Winnipeg 14. Movement, Willie Jefferson. Flag coming out later. That one intended for Jalen Ackman. The Red Blacks live to fight another down.
we'll discuss. Two penalties on the play. Offside, Winnipeg, number five. That penalty is declined. We have defensive pass interference, Winnipeg, number 31. Be half the distance to goal. First down, Ottawa. Evan Holm called on the P.I. And yeah, you're going to see Acklin here working out of the slot against number 31, Evan Holm. Holm just hanging on a little bit after the initial collision. Slowing Acklin down as he tries to make the break. Credit to Acklin for initiating contact on that one, essentially drawing the penalty. This is game five for the Red Blacks. They've scored only four touchdowns this season, one on a punt return. Trying to find the end zone here is Crum. Gets away for a moment and chucks it into the end zone. Nobody home as it heads out of bounds. They love the decision by the young quarterback. He got his eyes out there, knew he was going down. He's just getting rid of that ball to save the field position. He initially, you see Nate Bahar on the right side was open, but Crum's not going to have a chance to get there. <laughs> He's got Willie Jefferson in his face instantly. Adam Big Hill nipping at his heels. Good awareness here in his first CFL start to recognize the situation. And his first incompletion of this drive now five for six, 77 yards. More yards passing than he has had throughout the rest of the game. Trying again. Oh, nearly completes it, but no, around the five intended for Keaton Brugling falls incomplete. And uh, we now have a third and goal coming up for Ottawa. Yeah, Brugling, the Carlton product, working across the formation here. Uh, unable to get the squeeze there. And the offense stays on the field. Touchdown or bust coming up here for the Red Blacks. Only one touchdown pass this season. That was Marco Dubois. A long run after the catch a few weeks ago. Crom looking for his first. Into the end zone, no. For Ackland, and it falls shy. And the Red Blacks got close, but they will turn it over on downs. Another turnover going Winnipeg's way. Not for a lack of a good effort by Crom and the Red Blacks offense, but they will have nothing to show for it here. Winnipeg football still up 19. Zach Kolaros with his team leading again and a sample of his work so far in this game. Yeah, another big day for the Bombers quarterback. It, you know, you kind of take it for granted. He has just been so good since donning the blue and gold. But Zach, 18 for 27 on the day, 297 yards, couple touchdowns, no picks. There's uh, no wonder this guy's the back-to-back -back reigning most outstanding player in the Canadian Football League. Last year, the first, he went over 4,000 yards in his career. Of course, many of his seasons with Hamilton shortened by injury. On pace right now for even more than that for the two-time MOP and on the ground, Brady Oliveira. And a longer gain for him the way it's gone on the ground for the CFL's leading rusher. Yeah, you look at what Zach has done. And look at the name ahead of him. Yes, sir. The most legendary of legendary Ottawa CFL players, Russ Jackson, who retired back in 1969, standing at fifth. With a win by Kolaris, he would jump ahead by a couple of percentage points. Second and four coming up, and the 19, 16 point lead. So, still, yes, two scores, but Ottawa was so close to making it a one score game. Couldn't get it done in the third down and goal. So Winnipeg still in charge. Faking the handoff, dumping it off to Oliveira. Oh, he lost the ball after a good run after the catch, and the Red Blocks have it. Damon Webb, and he coughs it up after he was hit. The whistle blowing is <laughs> uh, Frankie Griffin running with it, but it's another break the Red Blacks need after Oliveira had something good going after the catch. A turnover going Ottawa's way. Oliveira stayed in bounds. It got punched out. And ultimately, recover. Adam O'Claire yes, makes sir. it all for naught. Holding the turnover sledgehammer on the sidelines as he was the man who tracked down Oliveira and punched that one out with the right hand. 
Nice job by the Red Blacks middle linebacker. A little bit of a scramble there before D. Webb ultimately comes up with the ball. Right at the Ottawa 54, so just shy of midfield. Still down 16. Crumb back to work and sharper in the second half. That one completed to Nate Bahar. Bahar working back to the football here. They spot it just shy of a first down, about a nine yard pickup here. Working tempo on the second and short now. Still at a shotgun is Crump. From the Winnipeg 47 on the ground, Devontae Williams first down and closer to the 40. The drive continues, and it has been, even though they don't have the points to show for it, a very different looking Ottawa offense the second half. Yeah. Definitely a nice burst there from Devontae Williams, offensive line. Creating a nice run lane for him. To the Winnipeg 41, throwing off to his right. And coming down with that is Jalen Acklin with Evan Holm on him. And looks like Acklin is uh, a left or right leg injury. He gets up though. Yeah, I wonder if that was a, a cramp the way he worked on it. But good battle going on between he and Evan Holm over there. Acklin. Heating up a little bit here in the second half, which is a positive again for Ottawa. And they spotted at the 30, so that's another first down. So Crum and company continue to impress. Said it uh, before, and I'll say it again. Of course, they need the end zone on the ground. Breaking out to the right, Ethan Nichols helping take down Devontae Williams, but not until he gets just inside the Winnipeg 25. Five and a half minutes on the clock. Still time. They can get a touchdown here and get it to a one score game. Yeah, the compete level in Ottawa, and we saw it last week in Hamilton as well after Jeremiah Masoli went down. The factor that can't be denied. Trump takes off. It's taken down around the 10. Another first down. And you wonder if going forward the way that Dustin Crum has been able to hurt Winnipeg a little bit with his legs. If opposing teams may start to spy the Ottawa quarterback a little bit. Right at the 10, a first and goal. Dominating in first downs in the second half. Oh, Brandon Alexander comes in, and Crum was able to get it away afterwards. Down near the end zone, he did not see Alexander coming in and the safety blitz. Yeah, I love this. Alexander is coming from the bottom of your screen. We've seen him on the safety blitz up the middle a couple of times. This time, end of the line with another linebacker coming from that side. That eats up the running back. Leaves Alexander free, but moving him around to different places. Love what Richie Hall has done defensively. In the first half, Winnipeg had 13 first downs, Ottawa three. In the second half, Ottawa has 14, Winnipeg three. But on the scoreboard, which matters most, it's a big difference, isn't it? And it's not going to help here as the Bombers register another sack. It is Les Maruo, the linebacker in, to take him down in the sixth sack for Winnipeg's defense in this game. Yeah, you see Maru two-point stance there up at the line of scrimmage from his linebacker spot and just comes underneath on the running back, Devontae Williams. Just needs to be a little firmer on that inside leg. Third down. It is third and goal, but it's a long way away now back at the 17. Another... End zone or bust situation for Ottawa. From end zone, look! Nearly intercepted. Doesn't matter anyway. Houston got his hands on it. He doesn't get the pick, but it is a turnover Holding again. Ottawa number 59. The penalties declined. Ball will be turned over on downs. First down, Winnipeg. Another turnover for Winnipeg on the holding penalty is declined. So Houston here, and they're closing in on it. He would pass Cal Murphy. 
for his 87th regular season win and that will be second most in the history for head coaches of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers but Grant is the leader he's number one Cal Murphy had been second the late Cal Murphy who passed away back in 2012 and a great head coach in the CFL and and O'Shea tied him last week and could go ahead assuming the Bombers do hang on for a victory here. Take a break three minute warning here in the fourth. On defense they suddenly do. Just a mislocated throw you're going to see here right basically what happens is early on the game the interception was a bad with bad located ball this is just a little bit outside DB's on an outside position recognize it runs it in the end zone great score to get this crowd going again guys excellent job that's what you get your defense got to do they got to they got to do their part go out every play and not worry about what happened before not worry about the offense play the best defense you can play an outstanding job right there by Andridge that is just the fifth touchdown scored by Ottawa this season three on offense the other two by Brandon Danridge one a punt return touchdown and the other this pick six and now you know would this be the a bad time to bring up as they pull within 10 that 11 point swing there you go in the first half on a penalty and a drop ball well they have to go for two of course to get it to a one score game get it down to eight not much choice here with two and a half to go the end zone look they got, got it. it two point conversion one score game Let us know what you saw, Lapo. Yeah, I think they're they're going to motion in. They're going to motion to the boundary here to just throw a nice, easy. I, I believe it's just going to be a nice, easy throw here with two hitches underneath. And Zach takes the underneath throw, but I, I just think what happens is he just misses this throw. That's what they got. Two underneath throws with a corner route. Okay, and the thing I see at the end of that, Wolitarski starts to move, right? He thinks he starts to move inside, and you just can't do that. Like, Zach's ready to throw the ball. He's got to stay out there. That may be what happened here. And then on the convert, really good throw. They've gotten better protection this half, guys. I really think they've done a better job of protecting Dustin, make sure he has to throw off the wider edge uh, free rushers and that. So, hey, we've got a game. That was the seventh career pick six thrown by Zach Kolaris, his first as a member of the Bombers. And if Mike O'Shea had been listening with about three minutes to go talking about him closing in on a victory here, he'd be cursing us. Yes. So no more of that. No more Osh talk. No, no more Osh talk. And he would appreciate that as this is a one score game. And yeah, Ottawa. And think of how well they've looked offensively in the second half and didn't get the touchdowns to show for it when they got into the red zone and went for it on third down and goal and just couldn't get those points. It's just eight points separating O'Shea's Bombers and Ottawa now with 17 on that interception return for a touchdown by Brandon Dandridge. So Lapo this is a great time. I want to pick your brain a little bit from a coaching perspective. Some of the things you're thinking is Ottawa. Are you thinking on side kick here and, and some of the clock management things you start to think about at this stage in the game. Yeah you're going to kick you know you, you've got plenty of time. You're going to kick this deep. Try to play defense like you played all game and then just get an opportunity get one more opportunity to get the ball. The only with the kickoff. Greg McRae up across the 35 and now with 229 still plenty of time that defense for Ottawa has been very strong and let's don't forget like on second and short Winnipeg was on offense they hit Brady old there in the flat it's a huge run upfield Eau Claire has a huge effort play chases it down then he creates a fumble you know that would have put them close to field goal range so the defense is really just not worrying about what's happening they're worried about what they need to do each rep and that's what you have to do to be successful. And this is what we heard Bob Dice talk about at halftime, yeah, right? Exactly a whole Bob team talked. effort yep. to get back into it. Don't worry about anybody old. else. Worry about yourself. At the Winnipeg 36. First and 10 bombers. Offense quickly back on after the pick six. Taking the handoff, completing it. And that's Dalton Schoen who gets it across the 50, closer to midfield. A flag is down. It's the same play they've hit. That's the third time they've hit this. And uh it's a 
A zone play where the quarterback pulls it off the edge. He knows he's going to get somebody coming at him as he sees that and then but he knows he's got a wide open throw. And it's coming back. Legal interference blocking downfield Winnipeg number 10 prior to the pass was thrown. That's a 10 yard penalty repeat first down. And Nick Dembski knowing where the ball was going what they're trying to set up and it's almost like an extended screenplay essentially and going to show with the ball but Dembski a little bit early getting out there with the block. Watch Dembski coming from the bottom of your screen. He's right on the hash mark. Just blocking a little bit early on, I believe it was Douglas Coleman. First and 20 now on that 10-yard penalty. Completing that one. Shorter pass up around the 30 to the 31, Rashid Bailey. So a gain of five. It'll be second and 15 coming up. Yeah, Ottawa defense has them right where they want them with a little bit of help from that penalty, but second and extra long here. Great opportunity to get the ball back. We'll see what Baron Miles can dial up their offense has driven the ball well in this second half they can get the ball back two minutes on the clock they have time four man rush Claros to the right and it's complete and a big first down Winnipeg up near the bomber 50 and there's a reason why a large group of these guys have won themselves a couple of Grey Cups. But Dalton showing the one receiver, first man closest to the sideline on this one. Push your defender deep. Ball thrown behind, he just works back to it. And that's the beauty of having a veteran quarterback. They were walling all the inside receivers. They knew, like Zach knew, it was a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, so he trusted and gets the ball out outside on the perimeter. He knew immediately where to go with the football. It takes his drop and throws it. That's the beauty of having a guy who's seen this picture so many times. That was their first second down conversion of this second half. Up to the bomber, 50, 135 and counting. Eight-point Winnipeg lead on the ground. Brady Oliveira grinds out about three more second down and long coming up and you talk about that that first Time second out. down Ottawa first second down conversion of the half for Winnipeg again clutch play right when it, you need to make certain plays to win this is a team that has shown over the years the ability to do that and Ottawa's made, uh, Ottawa's done a really good job of making Winnipeg one dimensional because Brady Oliveira does not have great numbers today. He hasn't, they haven't been able to get that run established. So Zach's had to do it on the, you know, trying to get some second down conversions. You know, that last second down was big for Ottawa's defense. This one even bigger, 128 on the clock. Second and seven, Bombers approaching midfield. Trying to keep a drive going and not give Ottawa's offense a chance. Yeah, clock critical and field position critical at this point for Ottawa's team. Well, they keep it on the ground to Oliveira, and like much of this game, he's just had nowhere to go in running the football. So 124, third down now, and the punting team will come out for Winnipeg. Yeah, you may get people say, well, geez, why are, you, why are you running the ball here when you haven't run the ball great? You know, Ottawa's already used their timeout. You know, Coach O'Shea wants to run the football, make sure that clock starts again. He run as much time down the clock as possible to leave Ottawa's offense. Not a lot of time to go the length of the field. There you go. The clock started again. They'll run this clock all the way down to leave them take 20 more seconds off the clock. They would have thrown it, been incomplete. They would have stopped the clock. So Jamison Sheehan will wait. That clock ticks on 12, 11. Standing just outside is 42 returners back. Scarborough and Dandridge. Sheehan gets it away and a beautiful punt. To chase them deep. Dandridge has it. Spin and gets out at around the 15. A long field with a short amount of time for Dustin Crum and the Ottawa Red Blacks needing to get down the field and get in for a touchdown and a chance to tie the second half of the doubleheader coming up from Mosaic Stadium in Regina. The Stampeders and Riders 
7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, coming up soon. We're not done quite yet here. And remember that game that went into overtime at McMahon three weeks ago. Jake Mayer into the end zone, picked off by Nick Marshall. End of that. They're both coming off a bye. And they meet again coming up on TSN. So here we go. Dustin Crum, first CFL start. Blitz coming. Has time. Off to the left and complete. Nate Bahar stretching to get out of bounds, and he does. With Abu Durami Soiree on the coverage. But I just want to go back to the punt for a minute because it's been interesting to watch the chess match in the, the punting game, particularly Winnipeg's punt team versus Ottawa's return team. Winnipeg was looking to get the ball on the ground for much of the game, forced Ottawa to go with two returners. They continued to try and do that, but there they boom it, force Ottawa to catch the ball deep in their own end because they can't give up a single. Not an eight-point game. Up the right, complete, finds the spot. Ackland with the ball, out of bounds, another first down for the Red Blacks. I love this catch from Jalen Ackland. One of the Red Blacks who's really picked things up here in the second half of this ball game, but he makes it look easy, but this is a tough catch. And to working toward a corner type angle, but ball coming over his shoulder. He knows a hit's coming in his face. And quickly again, Bahar. The Mario Houston as Bahar reached out. The ball came loose, but they whistle it dead, knees down. Trying to stretch out for as much yardage as he can. They've done a good job of giving, uh, playing max protection. They got two backs in the backfield, so Dustin has more time to throw guys, and that's helped them in this second half. And that's seven more yards, Bahar, and a second and three coming up. This is the 43rd play by Ottawa's offense in the second half compared to 16 for Winnipeg. Complete again and out of bounds. Bahar again, midfield, 24 seconds to go. They need to get close enough for Crum to take a shot at the end zone. And it's been fun to watch Dustin Crum and the Ottawa Red Blacks these last two weeks. Young guy giving them a chance to win. Back to back, little help from his defense obviously here today. Five straight completions again for Crum. Oh, sorry, man. My fault. 24 seconds. Pass time. Over the middle, complete again. Inside the 40, it's Hardy. They hustle up to the ball, 19 seconds on the clock. The exact situation Ottawa was in a week ago. Dustin Crum with the ball in his hands in the final minute, down by eight. Can he write a different ending here? He nearly had the touchdown in that game, using his feet. With his arm now, deeper look, and caught by the heart. Did he keep his feet in? Yes. A catch for the Ottawa Red Blacks. They are getting close again. Ottawa's making this interesting with time running out. Yeah, Bahar right along the sidelines, top of your screen. Drives the defender deep, comes back to it. Well-placed throw by Dustin Crum in a critical moment of this ball game. Here we go. Earlier this quarter, they got goal to go twice, went for it on third down, and came up with nothing. If they can get in now, they'd have a chance to tie this game, force overtime. It's at the 12. And a first and ten. Seven seconds. Willie Jefferson chasing him. Crum takes off. Cuts inside. Touchdown. Touchdown, Ottawa. This time, Crum gets into the end zone. And the Red Blacks, incredibly, are a two-point convert away from forcing overtime. No quit in these Ottawa Red Blacks. They showed it last week, stopped just short of the goal line on the final play. This time, Dustin Crum will not be denied. Lapa, what are you thinking for a two-point play? Where are you looking? Uh, I try to use his legs somehow, right? Whether it's a zone read or let him run a quarterback draw. Something that uh, gives him more options than just throwing it to the back of the end zone. As Dwayne talked about last week in the final play, he couldn't quite get there. This time he does. The Red Blacks have a chance. It comes down to this. Two-point conversion. Quickly looking in. Yeah. They get it. We got a tie game. We've got overtime. The Nate Bahar drive, boy. He made all them catches.
We talked about Nate Bahar off the top as the security blanket for the young quarterback. And at a critical time, who does he go to? Yeah. Nate Bahar, high percentage, easy throw, tucks it in there. Yeah, you got to love that. Bobby Dyson, the Ottawa Red Blacks, coming all the way back. What a character builder, regardless of how this finishes for the Ottawa Red Blacks. OT is so unique because you're not playing full football with the, the shootout style overtime, but we'll see if they're able to carry over momentum here. The rules of overtime. Captains, I have the coin for the overtime period. The league logo is heads. The team logo is tails. Winnipeg, you're the visitors. What's your choice? Heads is the call. It's a tail. Ottawa, you have the choice of offense, defense, or selecting an end. You'll go on defense. What end? What end would you like the first period inning to be played at? At this end. Okay. Winnipeg's on offense at this end. So the Red Blacks want to go second, of course, to see what they're going to need after this first possession by Winnipeg. Two mini games. It's tied after the first mini game, after one possession each, then they go to a second one. It was a seven play, 94 yard drive, deep in their own zone, from leading the way down in under a minute to tie the game. I would take a look back at this drive, just great poise by Dustin Crum, but you know, Lapo, you also got to like the receivers stepping up and making plays throughout this. Yeah, earlier in the game, you know, uh, they, they had the touchdown drop probably, right? These guys have made catches. There's a couple balls behind them that they made, and then Dustin uses his legs to get in, right? And and, and great play by uh, by Nate Bahar, just sitting in the zone, understanding he's got nobody there. Good read by Dustin. And a quick question for you. You know, conventional wisdom suggests that you want to go second in overtime, know what you need. Would you ever consider going first, given the way this game ended? No, you still want to know how many points you got. Here we go, overtime. Play big and off to the left for Solaris. He completes that to Rashid Bailey. It, and real important, those first plays, you do not want to take a sack, lose yardage, because you yeah. knock yourself out of even kicking a field goal. So positive play, first down to get them in a good position. They get five, so a second and five coming up here on the Ottawa 30. Yeah, they started big, now Greg McRae is into the game. For Winnipeg going back to that traditional five receiver set. What a finish here in the nation's capital. My goodness. Second and five. First overtime. Kalaris under pressure. You said don't take the sack. They just took the sack. Yeah, now you're going to push that to a really long field goal, right? The defense did exactly what they need to do. Force the longest field goal possible, right? And Zach slow getting up. Michael Wakefield's the one that got in. Another big defensive play for Ottawa. Yeah, Wakefield coming from a stand-up quick swim inside. It looked like Patty Newfeld thought he was going to have to fan out to the right there. He kind of let Wakefield go. So clearly some miscommunication on that Winnipeg offensive line in a critical moment. Michael Wakefield makes him pay. And so Sergio Castillo comes on to see if he can... Put three on the board here in this overtime for the Bombers. It will be a 48-yard try. Down. And perfect. Right through for Castillo. Another clutch kick for him. So the Red Blacks get a possession in this first mini game. And they'll need at least a field goal. A welcome to viewers on CBS Sports Network tuning in for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders Calgary Stampeders. Here in Ottawa, we're not done yet. At one point, the Red Blacks trailed Winnipeg by 19, and they came back down 16 under three minutes to go, including a last-minute drive to tie this game. We're in overtime. Winnipeg has just kicked a field goal in this first mini-game. Ottawa football 
A touchdown would win it. A field goal would force a second mini game. Dustin Crum in his first CFL start. Four receivers to the right. On the toss left. Devontae Williams breaks a tackle. And he gets it inside the 30. A nice execution on this little option by Dustin Crum drawing the edge defender in. Willie Jefferson coming towards the quarterback. Hangs on just long enough to basically free up the edge for Devontae Williams. Nice first down run. And a gain of six, a second and four coming up. Crum steps up, runs again. Big run, Dustin Crum to get the Ottawa Red Blacks the victory. Incredible. This is a team that's needed more than a crumb of hope. They got a lot more in their rookie quarterback on this unlikely comeback. Just yards away from the win or the tie last week in Hamilton. Looking to write a different ending this week and they did exactly that. Dustin Crum in his first Canadian Football League start leads his team back. And here with the winning touchdown in overtime. He scored the touchdown on the final play of regulation, leading to a two-point convert to tie it. In this game, he had nine carries for 103 yards, and he scored two touchdowns, including that one, to give the Red Blacks their second victory of the season, their second straight at home, and they just beat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the process. What a magical moment here in the nation's capital. Disbelief at TD Place.